And now we're going again. Full roll. <coughs> so you would like to be a Ken mechanic today, yeah? Oh, it'd be all right. He's got equipment to tell you what's wrong with the car. Mm -hmm. Except don't tell you how to fix it, I guess. You had to guess pretty much in those early days, didn't you? We had to know. We didn't. Yeah. It didn't do much guess. No. <laughs> What was one of your toughest problems out there? Took you the longest to, to solve or to fix? Oh, I mentioned diesel. Because I've never done too much diesel work mm -hmm. on diesel trucks. <clears throat> when did diesels come in? Late 30s? Um, they come in old. Yeah, well, that's right. They were a development of World War II, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. That's right. Well, they didn't see too many diesels. They had a first 48 when they went out there. Mm -hmm. But basically, we had to put in diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you had to get some diesel mechanics that knew what... Oh, yeah. Is that a whole new ball game with diesel, diesel mechanics? Pretty, pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you also put in some pretty heavy equipment out there to handle some of this stuff, right? Yeah, we did. We had to. Some transmissions and things like that. Mm -hmm. Would you pull transmissions on these big oh, yeah. tractors? Sure. No, no. Would anybody, uh, did anybody else do it out this way? Many out this way. Mm -hmm. Even National, I think, did. They had to, too. Yeah. Well, you, would you have some, would you have some uh, company, you'd have company facilities out this way, though, wouldn't you? Like Ken Worthy or Peterson or, or Matt or somebody would have. Uh, uh, most of our parts we had to go to Omaha. Yeah, okay. We were like coming to these kind of parts. Mm -hmm. We didn't stop too many. That can be rather expensive to stop that much, too. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So you gradually got out of the mechanical business and, and got, got into the restaurant business, eh? Yeah. Did you like it better? Oh, yeah. Cleaner work? You know, it's cleaner work and you went out in the weather like in the garage. Not, not in bad weather? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, of course, that garage, did you, you rebuilt that garage. It wasn't always a Quonset hut, was it? Yeah, it was always a Quonset hut. It was hard to heat then, wasn't it? Well, no, we insulated it. Okay. Is that closet still standing out there? Oh, he, I tore it all down. Okay. Okay. We put a pump and pantry in there. Yeah. Okay. That's all. That was all gone. That's all gone now. Mm -hmm. Even the the whole uh, the facade of the thing, the brick. Oh yeah, the front no. Front and everything. He tore everything out. Okay. Okay. Uh, this child still has his place out there, though. He's got a building out there, doesn't he? Yeah, that was another story. See, we kept heading down and we built a... You know, first we built a garage and a kind of an office for Herman Brothers. Mm-hmm. For their headquarters. Then Firestone wanted a retread shop, so we built a room for Firestone. Yeah. Tire and rubber. Mm-hmm. A retread shop. Then a man come along, and he still had a sugar factory here, and they wanted to store sugar. They had some kind of contract with the sugar factory. Yeah. And they stored 21 million pounds of sugar in this warehouse. And that was in the 40s, huh? Yeah, that was probably in the late 40s. Yeah, okay. Okay. And then, came along and owned another corporation. Third City Elevators we built. There were elevators out there. Yeah, okay. Okay. Charles and Fred and I and another guy. Well, all of you were in it then, right? All of us were in it. 
Norman was who? Norman. Yeah, Norman was from doing the farming. He was still farming. Yeah. Um, Charles had his shop out there too, didn't he? He was building some stuff that uh, he had patented or something like well, that. He's got a shop out there now. Yeah. I don't know what his setup is. He sold part of the park, and I don't know yeah. how much of it he sold or anything. He's got a workshop out there in the storage in one side of it, I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's kind of that's kind of interesting. And 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 Charlotte was with you all the time on this sort of stuff. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Till we sold off back to Fred mm -hmm. when we retired. Well, are you happy you retired at that particular oh, time? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was getting to the age where you didn't want to run around anymore. Well, right? in the wintertime, I didn't want to be out fighting the cold on the driveways and stuff. So you, going clear back, you went to school over in uh, in, in Sac City, Iowa. That's where I, that's where I was born. Yeah. And you got must have got out of school about the time the depression started, right? Oh, 31, 32. No, I came out here. I came out here in 1924. That's when the depression was really on. You came here to Grand Island in 1924. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you you were uh, you were, uh, then going to school back in World War One days. Well, no, I believe I quit school by then. Oh, how, how far did you go? I went in the tenth grade. Yeah. Okay. But your but your dad died. Yeah, when I was twelve. Yeah. My mother in there, so. I was just kind of out on my own. Yeah. From then on. You never lived with your mother and her new husband then? I did for about 30 days or so. Yeah. You didn't get along? Oh, we got along, I guess, all right. But I didn't want to be a father. Yeah, okay. And that's what choice you had in those days, right? Okay. <laughs> so you kind of took, packed your bag and took off. Yeah. And you ended up in Grand Island in the mid twenties sometime. Twenty four. Okay. So you were hanging around a long time before you before you married you were you married before that? Yeah. Well oh, you were married before you married Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you get divorced or what happened? Yeah. Okay. Do you work? Do you have to work too much, Al, or what? Oh, no, not really, I guess. Did you have some kids by that marriage? No. Oh, okay. That part you can leave out. Yeah, I, know. I don't want to get into it. Don't any to in but you were a divorcee when you met uh, yeah. Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Okay. Man about town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Married six years and then single six years. Okay, okay. Well, not to worry. I had the same history, so. <laughs> it was not too common in your day and age, though. No, not like it is now. No, that's right. That's right. What did you do for hobbies back in those days? Oh, I to chase girls. <laughs> oh, we took a lot of dances. Yeah. Did you have any, you, were, were you a pretty good musician or a dancer? Well, of course, I guess I thought it was. I don't, yeah. I don't know whether it was or not. <laughs> well, you're never a big guy, were you? No. Well, you must you, you must have been, been a pretty good conversationalist. I think I'd be, I believe. 
was really in the plan. Oh, I'd like to play pool. Pool? Mm-hmm. Good. You could do a good one on that, eh? Yeah. But you lose it, too, don't you, Al? I imagine you do, yeah. Yeah, I... I they don't it. stay with you. I, I used to play pool, and I used to play pool with a very good pool player. Mm-hmm. And um, he was, he could position the ball any time, you know. He, he played for position, that sort of thing. I worked in a pool and, um, a while here. But he, he lost it after so many years of not really competing heavily. Mm-hmm. I used to play some pretty good pool players, too. I'll bet you did. <laughs> and the house, man, even the pants were pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't have anybody to tell you to stay out of pool halls, either, did you? No. So. What was your toughest, some of your toughest jobs as a mechanic? Remember any large, any, any large, uh, job you had from a trucking company out at uh, Spalsam and Eaton? Well, one of the toughest. We did one, one company up in St. Paul, Jacob Oil Company. Yeah. They had a Mack truck and they had to have a new engine. We flew a new engine out here for mm-hmm. by plane. And you installed it? No, they they installed them. They they sent somebody down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where was Mack Truck headquarters that time? Pennsylvania? Well, that was our factory. Yeah. Downtown Pennsylvania. Yeah, okay. That's where I saw it. Yeah. They had a job in Des Moines. Well, Mack trucks were quite popular at that time, weren't they? Oh, yeah. But then they got into, co- into some, some heavy competition from international, didn't they? Well, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But they were all at a high price. But we sold Peter Peter Kiewitz quite a few trucks. Kiewitz? Peter Kiewitz. Yeah, mm-hmm. Max? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But then Kenworthy, Ken Kenworth came in later on, and, uh, and uh, who does this Peterbilt job? Yeah, yeah. Um, when did when did you first see the tractor trailer situation coming out here, out this way, Al? It was a long time ago. It was starting in '48. Mm-hmm. And then on the tractor trailer. Yeah. And it's not supposed to be pretty good trailers in the country. But not in the 30s at all. Not too much in the 30s, not too much in the 40s. It really started in the 50s. Yeah, after World War II, basically. Mm-hmm. And then it started growing in the 50s, right? Yeah. So you had. So you had really gasoline engine. Uh, yeah, mostly. What do you call them? One body trucks? They, they're six wheelers? No, they're eight wheelers. Well, most of our stuff was all six wheels. Yeah. That's really four, just four wheels. Yeah. They were duels on the back. Okay. Single on the front. Okay. Man, they weren't they weren't that tough. I don't imagine to handle. No. Um, yeah, okay, so the roads at that time in in the late thirties and the early forties. There weren't too many paved roads, were there? Not too many. It was getting to be a lot. Well, Highway thirty was paved. Yeah, Highway thirty was paved. I think that was too Yeah. Because I think that job was done sometime in the 30s. I'm trying to remember because I was around. I came in about that time. You used to come in in the 60s. Yeah. I 
Yeah, okay. That's about what it's But you had some gravel roads out here then. Oh, yeah. Were there any blacktop roads out that way? There were blacktop. Okay. Well, when you went to Omaha, you'd probably go Highway 30 most of the way, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. And that was paved. Oh, yeah, all the way into Omaha. But when you went to St. Paul, for example, or really, you'd run out of pavement pretty fast, wouldn't you? I imagine so. We never went up that way. Yeah. But, yeah, I didn't go to the car north yet. Did it make it kind of tough to handle, uh, did it put a lot of extra wear and tear on the truck to ride the gravel road? I don't think so. Not on the engines, I don't suppose. No. What was your biggest problem uh, mechanically with with trucks in before World War II? Oh, I don't know. Before World War II, because I really wasn't too much. Yeah, you weren't into that, okay? So we're not too old. Mm-hmm. Well, let's look at after World War II then, in the late forties. Carburetor problems? Not that many. Oh, not too much carburetor. No. I'm sure you had a lot, lot of tires. Oh, yeah. But you stock tires out there, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. That could cost you a pot full of money in inventory. Yes. Sir. Maintenance, too. Because <laughs> you had to have them to fit every, every size wheel, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, you had to get quite an inventory of parts. Wheel and rim, tires, stuff, things like that. Okay. Okay. But there wasn't any, now I wouldn't think there would be any common problem that you might have with trucks to, at that stage of, in the game. Not too much, no. Did you have, uh, w were there weights, there were, were there truck scales? in existence at that time? They were just starting in San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. To lay in. What kind of uh, gear shift levers would, would the early trucks have? Uh, would it explain plane four speed forward? You know, Mac always had they didn't have about 10 different speeds. Okay. 10 different shifts. Mm -hmm. On one lever? Yeah. Yeah, one of them would be on the over and one of them would be under. Yeah, okay. So they could get two speeds out of one here. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. But there'd be 10 gears. 10 speeds, yeah. 10 speeds, yeah. And did you have to double clutch those babies? No, most of them were on pretty automatic. Mm -hmm. I don't remember a truck of that age, but it's uh, that time. But did you have the steer mounted uh, gear shift things then, or did you mostly on the floor? It was all on the floor. Everything was on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Was there an auxiliary power unit on the trucks at that time? For example, uh, could you uh, could you run a power takeoff on a uh, off a truck engine? Um, well, a lot of them you could. Yeah, off the transmission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was good about the Mack trucks at that time? Well, they were just built a little better than most of the trucks. Um, they, they, pretty much, they pretty much all had the same engines? No, they didn't. 
not too many tough trucks. Trucks built their own engines. Mm-hmm. And Mac did. <coughs> they had several different gas engines they perfected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big and little. And it's in their national, I guess, too. But you were happy with Matt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they yeah, were good. They were a good company. Except out here, you didn't have buyers. Or, you know, a big, good truck. Farmers didn't buy that kind of stuff. They'd buy Chevrolet GMC mm-hmm. International. So you'd have to have a... So you have to have a pretty good over-the-road operation. Oh, yeah. It took to uh, work it for you. Yeah. That's about the time diesel was coming in. Cummings diesels. Yeah. And all of that. Cummings came in right after the war, too, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Who was the first diesel operator out? Do you remember? A tractor job? Cummins, maybe? I think Cummins was about the yeah. when the, they were supplying you all the, the big back trucks was Cummins station. A lot more back east than out here. They were out here too much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So you and Charles have been together about 50 years now. Yeah. Okay. Does she does she talk to you at all and recommend oh, yeah. you? Yeah. Good. And you must be in here, I presume, don't oh, you? Yeah. It's a beautiful place. How long have you lived here? We built it in 56. Oh, okay. So that's a long spell. Mm-hmm. In those early days when you, you and, and uh, the Bossomans were building that that thing out on Highway 30, Al. Did you contract all the jobs out, or did you do some of it yourself? Well, I don't know what you mean, contract the job. Well, I mean the construction job. No. Charles did most of the construction. All we put out was uh, the brick work, the front we called. Was, that was brick. Tiles, brick. Yeah. And, and of course the electric car. Yeah. And some of that, but the rest of it, we pretty much put in ourselves. Okay, but uh, you had a bricklayer, you had a professional bricklayer out there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember how much that, that building cost you? That first one? No, I don't. It wasn't too great. Yeah. Well, it wasn't too big a building either, was it? Well, it was 60 by 100. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you put a kitchen in it at that time? A what? A kitchen? To cook. A kitchen to cook. No, that was over there. That was later. That was in the cafe. Yeah. But you built that as you you built the building then? No. No, you added that on. We added, put that all in. Yeah. When we decided we had to have a cave to Mm Mm-hmm. Who decided that? Well, we just knew we had to for truckers. They had to have a place to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, just going to keep their business in and have a place. You didn't have any uh, sleeping quarters out there at that time, did you? Never did. I never did. Fred put them in out at the, high, at the interstate. Yeah. So, okay. So you'd probably get somebody from Omaha for repair.
fueling, wouldn't you? Um, uh, you know, how long did these trucks go uh, after, in, in the late 40s and so forth, before they needed to be fueling? Oh, they took that old home should stop here and go to North Park. Yeah. And come back and maybe fuel again before we went to war. Sometimes they fuel them. That's great, yeah. And but they didn't have capacity like they do now. They only have a little bit on the hungry gallon to fuel. Some of them go on that. Yeah, okay. That, that's pretty heavy. I mean, what do you burn in di diesel on one of those big cats, the big uh, tractors? Uh, you, you burn it per hour or do you calculate it per mile? And you get eight eight miles per gallon or something like that? Oh, I don't think they don't get that much. Yeah. Five or six? Five or six is about average, I guess. Mm -hmm. You never drove a truck yourself uh, for hire, did you? I never drove one. We always had a drive. Yeah. That's what we were doing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the University Foundation and the Chancellor's Club in Omaha. Mm -hmm. $600,000 to the school of nursing in Omaha. You've been a friend of uh, some pretty powerful organizations then. Oh, yeah. The university. Mm -hmm. And the president, the Austin's, mm -hmm. the Nassau did Charlotte attend the University of Nebraska in my yeah, she went to the University of so. She didn't finish. She didn't have to be a teacher in those days. No, no, she just did it during the summer. Yeah. She went to Cardi also. Oh, did she? Okay. Cardi and Lincoln. Okay. Yeah. But Charlotte could hold her own in, uh, in, in any discussion with the three boys. Mm -hmm.